So we've saved maybe the best feature of this Skag Turf Storm for last, uh, especially if you define best as most complex, and that is the sprayer feature. So Gino's gonna take us through this and I'm gonna learn it right along with you guys. Okay, so when starting talking about a sprayer, let's start with the identification. We have two 30 gallon tanks left and right. Notice they are a clear see-through material, which does make it easier for the operator to check level. As we talk about the valves, we talked about a little bit in the instrument panel video, but what we have is we have our right and our left return and we have our right and our left supply. Okay. So what this allows for is a couple of different setups. First off, I can run two separate chemicals in each tank if I wish. Cool. So if I wanted to do that by opening my right hand supply and my right hand return, I'm gonna be able to work strictly off that right tank. Cool. Then I can switch over to the other material that's gonna be on my left tank. It also is gonna give me another capability and that capability is coming, coming into play if I'm running the same material in both tanks, okay. but perhaps I have an uneven distribution. Okay. And you'll learn how that's possible as we talk about the front boom and, and nozzles. But this gives me the ability to open my right hand supply open my left hand return and I can actually balance the tanks out. Wow. Now I have a balanced machine back for that hill climb capability if I'm in that position. Sure. And lastly, very important, because I have a supply line in and a return line out, okay. it's gonna eliminate the need for one additional item in the tank. Okay, so what is it, what is that? that is gonna be the agitator. Okay. So we don't need a tank agitator okay. because as the fluid is gonna be flowing constantly out and in, we are constantly mixing Naturally that chemical. Gotcha. Now, at no time does that mean that we wanna actually mix the chemicals together in the tank. Okay. You want to mix for precision reasons outside the tank and then add it. So it's not a mixing device, it's the not having the need for an agitator while using the machine. Got it. We talked earlier about the pressure gauge and here's where before we would start to, to go, we would already have our speed calibrated. We would have our pressure gauge set to 60 PSI, 40 PSI for a different material, but we're gonna have a, basically an opportunity to go up to 60, 40 is our most common, okay. our most common setting. Sure. We're running a five gallon pump five gallon per minute, there is an opportunity to add a seven gallon per minute pump if you need a larger capacity, and some areas of the country do require that or some materials do require that. The advantage is if you decide to do that upgrade, the system is already plumbed and completely wired for that. Okay. There's no additional work needed other than swapping the pump out. You're also gonna see the hose reel on the side. So I do have the ability to use my hose reel with a wand, 75 foot retractable, and that's gonna give me the opportunity to spot spray or hit those tighter areas. Okay. We already talked on the instrument video. We have the ability to turn the sprayer on and we have our valves. Once our pressure is set, we have our valves right here. So we have three valves. We have our center valve, which is gonna control our front boom. Then we have our auxiliary right side boom and our auxiliary left side boom. Notice I, like I talked earlier, in the need I need to turn off the spray, very quick and convenient. Sure. As we come off the machine from the operator's perspective, the one thing I do wanna stop and talk about just for a minute is the strainer. So this strainer is right on the side. It just spins on and off threaded. Inside is a 50 micron strainer, and that's going to keep any material um, from getting down into the nozzle. Okay. okay, and this is an important feature. Now, the, the real professionals watching this video know at the end of every day, they're gonna take that off and they're gonna clean that strainer. Okay. And by doing so, they're going to make a completely different trouble-free operation those because nozzles. we're not getting dirt and gotcha. debris into those nozzles. Smart. We talked about the ability to do three different valves. So the purpose behind that, on our front boom, we have three different spray mechanisms. Okay. So at each tip, we are going to get all three working together off that center valve. Okay. And then <clears throat> we have our extension booms. So I can pull the extension boom out, I can run only one side, or I can run both sides out. We're gonna pick up an extra tip on both of these, and that's gonna give us an eight foot wide boom 
capable of a 10 foot spray area. Okay. We do have adjustability and it is actually possible because each tip can be swapped out independently. You theoretically could have a different setup if that suited your needs. Very unique to the system or to, the, to, the, to these systems in a competitive field. So the booms, notice too, if we hit something, it immediately spring loads in. Away, yeah. It's a breakaway. So we don't have to worry about in the event that the operator clips something that they weren't thinking about, other than the fact they're gonna to have to stop and basically pull it back out. Sure. So I will need to grab this. One of the things I haven't got completely in my head yet is actually the tips. So this is a T-Jet AIXR spray tip assembly. And you'll notice these are the lavender, which has a specific flow rate. And the professionals in the field are gonna deal with the same people that they're, that they're getting their supply materials from. They can swap these tips out for that individual use. So it is a standard tip. It's not a SCAG specific part. And I just wanted to point oh, that out, okay? Oh. This is an industry standard as opposed to a SCAG part. Yeah, that's, that's good. Okay. So for the most part, that goes as a general knowledge-based video is gonna go through all of the features and components of the turf storm. Mm -hmm. We can certainly arrange for an on-site demo. We can actually get more in depth with everything that we're gonna go over on the machine, okay. but that's a great start. So if we've enticed you enough, now's the time, you're in the field, now's the time to schedule a demo. And the one thing we didn't talk about, Jesse, was who this machine is for. So yeah, tell me about that. So this machine could end up at a municipal, Obviously our townships, our counties, Park, they have Park. parks, they have recreations are taken care of. This could be a landscaper who's looking to actually take back control of his yards. A lot of landscapers out there sometimes will subcontract this type of work. Sure. This can put them in total control. And let's not forget, they have the spreader, the sprayer, and they have four season capability. And the opportunity to be uh, more profitable in your lawn care business because you're doing additional services while you're there cutting the grass. Absolutely. Of course, there's a multitude of other users, but who was the machine designed for? It was the designed for the professional sprayer spreader applicators. Sure. The people that make a business out of doing nothing but this, the true experts in the field, that's who this was designed for. Yep. It can work for what any customer end user, they just have to set up the demo, buy the machine, we'll make sure that you get fully educated and you can make some additional money. Thanks for watching. Thanks guys.